Hello and welcome to the first of many videos that will be coming soon on a weekly basis showing you some of the apps and tweaks that I've configured to improve the experience of using an iPad in your vehicle. The first app I'll be showing you is called Activator, which is very similar to If This Then That, but for iOS. Now in order to install this you will need to be jailbroken, which I'm not going to cover that process in this video since it's constantly changing and varies based upon the version of iOS you're running. Activator allows you to assign actions based upon events. For example, one of the most essential ones that I have set up is to automatically lock the iPad when I turn off my car. Now what you didn't see is that it actually did more than just lock the screen. If we go into the settings and take a look, you'll see that it turns off the screen, pauses the music, enables low power mode, turns off Wi-Fi, and cellular data. Now you're probably wondering why all that's necessary. Well, where I normally park, there's no Wi-Fi and the cellular signal is very weak, so this causes the iPad to search for signal all the time when it doesn't need to, and therefore it drains the battery. Even if it did have good signal, I wouldn't want it waking up randomly showing reminders, text messages, and other alerts from my phone when I'm not in the car. Then when the car is started up again and the iPad receives power, it automatically disables the low power mode, turns on cellular data, Wi-Fi, and GPS. Now you can also trigger these events by time. For example, I have a fail-safe so that if the car or iPad was ever lost or stolen, it will automatically turn itself on and report its connection every night at 1am for 10 minutes and that way I can log in the iCloud and track it if necessary. I have another event set up at 7 a.m. to basically do the same thing, and that way it gives it some time to do any updates or do anything in the background that it needs to before I drive to work in the morning. Now you can also use gestures to do things as well. For example, if I swipe in from the bottom left corner, I have it set to open the Arc application, which is what I use to link the iPad to the Pioneer head unit in case I want to change any settings or play the radio or something. Another shortcut I have set up is to quickly lock the screen. All I have to do is swipe up on any icon and boom, it goes off. And here's a shortcut where if I double tap on the clock, it opens up an app which I'll talk about more in an upcoming video, so stay tuned for that. Many people are used to tapping the upper left hand corner of the screen to go back to an app. However, this only works if you launch an app from within an app. Well, with this shortcut, it'll automatically open the most recent app that you have open at any time. This is actually a plugin called Last App, which you'll have to install separately, but once you do, you'll see it as an available action to assign to whatever shortcut you want. This is great for toggling between a music app and a navigation app, for example, without having to use the app switcher or go back to the home screen to launch them. If I want to take a screenshot, I obviously can't do that since the lock button is obstructed by this mount, and although I could use assistive touch to do this, then I have to keep this ugly button somewhere on the screen. So, I set up a gesture to put my finger on the Touch ID button and swipe up onto the screen, and that will capture a screenshot. This is really useful, although I admit that sometimes I do trigger screenshots by accident. However, I haven't found a better combination yet, so if you think of one, let me know down in the comments. Alright folks, hopefully this has answered your questions, as I've gotten some of my past videos about these kind of things, and if not, feel free to ask me down in the comments. If you found this video useful, make sure you like and subscribe and also click on that little bell icon so you stay notified whenever I post new videos. Like I mentioned in the beginning, this is the first video as a part of a new series where every week I'll be reviewing parts of my setup so that you can learn ways to help integrate your iPad with your car. Alright, thanks for watching and I'll see you all next week. Stay tuned for the next video.